Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. And here we are. We have our hero, Durfrey Kerman, here on the moon. He's done his thing. He's done his samples and his studies and so on. And it's now time to get him off the ground and send him back to Kerbin. Let's get our flight stats and proceed to just take off, pitch over to 90 degrees and get into orbit. Now the fuel in these side tanks are is empty so we'll be jettisoning those very shortly after liftoff and that should ensure that there will be plenty of Delta V for getting the ship back to Kerbin, especially with an 8.84 thrust to weight ratio. That's pretty good. All right, let's get him off the ground. Jettison those tanks. Pitch to 90. Get about 40 degrees or so. And just raise our apoapsis up to a suitably high altitude. Get this ship back to Kerbin, do something with the science that it has is bringing back, and then proceed on to the next step. Now, in previous video, I did mention that I was considering adding remote tech to this save, to this instance of Kerbal Space Program, and I actually did, and then I recorded a couple of episodes, and so far things had gone well, but, all right, 30 kilometer apoapsis is plenty here. Uh, I ran into a snag with remote tech. You see, I had also added remote tech to uh, my stream save, where I was, where I've been doing Kerbal Space Program on the stream. And all went well there for a while. But I forgot I can't use that bloody keyboard thing in this screen or it'll change the values. There. All right. Anyway, I had it in there, and uh, in the stream I had launched a bunch of satellites around Kerbin, and everything was working fine. I had uh, a couple of satellites around Minmus. I had sent, built and sent a rover to Minmus, and acquired a good bunch of science with that rover, using the ability to communicate back to Kerbin through the satellite network and relay and be able to transmit science. Everything was all fine and dandy. And then I sent a rover to the moon. Now, mind you, I had sent four of them out to Minmus, finally managed to land one and get a bunch of science, and uh, everything was fine. And in sending four, I was basically working on developing the design to get something that would work. And... So I finally got the refined design out here to the moon. And once it was at the moon, it landed successfully near one of the big craters. And I go to do some science, I go to transmit, and it tells me there are no comms devices on the ship, on the rover. And I'm looking at these two great big honking dish antennas big and honking each of those dish antennas were the kind they were the ones further a little farther down the tech tree that uh, had a 60 gigameter range and they were activated and they were targeted and there was a link to a satellite that had other links that went back to mission control 
it should have worked and it told me no comms devices and it just kept telling me that and so after a while of that I got fed up with it and I removed remote tech and that pretty much kinda of broke the save since then I spent about two hours working on that save editing the persistence file and some other things trying everything I could think of and I finally I'm not sure how managed to uh, restore that save to a usable condition and put things to where they were pretty much just before remote tech was added and so today I spent some more time removing remote tech from this save it was a little easier because I had not yet done very much with it and so while remote tech in theory in in essence sort of is a good idea because it does in fact add a level of realism to Kerbal Space Program that I really do appreciate the idea of but the simple fact is it just doesn't work now maybe it does work for others that's entirely a realistic thing you know I've heard plenty of reports of people that have been using remote tech with no problem everything was working it was just fantastic fine There, 27 kilometer periapsis at Kerbin. We are set for a direct, basically a single burn return. Excellent. All right, set an alarm for this. So. Remote tech may be usable at some point, but in my personal opinion, based on my experience, I'm not touching that thing again until it has been fixed and also until it has actually had documentation written for it. Documentation that ships with it in the form of a text file or even a PDF I mean, I don't particularly care to have the only source of documentation to be badly made YouTube videos or a Reddit page somewhere. It is simply unacceptable. It is, in my personal opinion, shoddy as all get out. A very shoddy way to do things. Very sloppy. A mod that does as much as remote tech does needs to be properly documented from the word go. And this thing isn't. I don't want to have to search through forum threads and reddit posts and horrible YouTube videos to try to find out how to use the thing. I want documentation that comes with it. Written in easy to understand English. Now, I'm sorry if that makes me sound like uh, a bit of a hard ass or whatever but you know, it's just the way it is. The thing has great potential, but the execution blows. And that's just the way that is. Okay, in the meanwhile, I will stop ranting about that. And we'll just concentrate on getting Durfrey Kerman home. I overshot my burn just a little bit. Let's flip around and retract just a little bit of that. I mean, we've got Delta V to burn, so why not burn it? 
Okay. Remove the node. Turn that off. And Durfrey Kremen is on his way home. 54 kilometer periapsis. Eh, that still be usable. Okay. But a time warp. And we'll get Durfrey Kremen back to Kerbin. We'll, we'll acquire all the science we can acquire. And then we'll start putting together a design for a rover. And the rover design, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that work off camera just simply because it could take a while. Alright, let's get back in here. And of course, he's returning on the night side because I didn't bother to wait two or three weeks to get him into the right position. Alright, retrograde, surface information, and a bit more time warp. Okay. And now let's go ahead and use the last of our fuel for deceleration. Because we're screaming in at over three kilometers per second. That's going to be good for right now. Okay, so physics time warp. Get down here lower. Looks like we'll have sunrise coming soon. And there we are. One orbital sunrise. Fireworks should begin reasonably soon. I'm physics time warping as quickly as I can here, so... Right. 30 kilometers, here's our re-entry effects. for the remainder of our fuel for the last little bit of deceleration. And go ahead and pitch up. Jettison that. Let it fall away. Turn this off. Go ahead and turn that off. And at about one kilometer, we'll activate the parachutes. Don't worry, Durfrey, you've got three parachutes on this thing. He's worrying anyway. probably looking at all the duct tape on the inside of the capsule and wondering if it's going to hold water out. He shouldn't worry. Duct tape holds the universe together. Certainly it can keep water out. Here we go. One safe landing. And now let's uh, throttle off and recover the vessel. All right, here we are. 371.2 science on this mission for a total of 415. Let's go 
go ahead and do something with the science real quick. Now there is some things to add because uh, I had also added the Keythane mod and so I have to go through on these nodes that I've already opened up and do the research purchase on each one of those to get the Keythane parts available. at least for the nodes that have already opened up and it looks like that's all of them, there's no more with any numbers on them we've got 415 science and let's see alright let's go ahead and get that and let's get that as well and I'm gonna go ahead and get this section because the aviation lights I put those in there along with the, aer the aerodynamics parts because it just kinda makes sense That's 75 science remaining Let's see, Kerbal Unrecon Unconstitutionator, oh boy, thermometer, ladder, alright, let's go ahead and get that, 75, oh I need 90 signs from anything in this part of the tree okay fine not a problem and now I'm going to adjourn to the vehicle assembly building and do some development work on coming up with a rover design and I'll be back when we're ready to fly so a funny thing happened on the way to design a rover I suddenly realized that I was lacking one very important piece of technology that is required for any rover some form of wheel. Small gear bay is not ideal but it would have worked if I had it. And any other wheels are farther down the tech tree somewhere I'm not exactly sure where but I don't have them yet. And so I have to abandon that plan and load up a ship to gather more science. We need the FLIX Mark III, an unmanned ship, and this ship will be sent on a mission to gather science. Hopefully enough science to unlock a significant amount of the tech tree. Alright, so here we are on the launch pad FLIX Mark III it bears a strong resemblance to the Mark II until you look up here at the capsule end gone are the uh, lander legs and landing engines the capsule has been replaced with a Staputnik probe that has three antennas on it there are two material two uh, goo observation units and one material bay. I would add more science instruments if I had them but that's what we've got. The mission of this ship is to get out there and gather a lot of science so that we can unlock more and better parts most notably rover parts such as wheels. So we're gonna launch this thing and see what is in the best position for a rendezvous and we're going to get some science so let's throttle up and get ready to go and we're away
initial takeoff primarily relying on the SRBs. And we'll switch to full power on liquid engines when the SRBs burn out. With a lighter load on top, this thing is taking off a lot better. Flying a lot easier. A lot, uh, still accelerating very well with like 60% throttle. This thing is going to have a lot of delta V left when it gets into orbit. SRB is ready to separate almost. Separate SRBs, throttle up to max on the liquid engines. Begin the quest for orbit. And this part is pretty straightforward, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out here and cut back in at orbit. Alright, we've just arrived in orbit, 115 by 92. And we've even got some fuel left in this booster stage to get us into orbit which means we've got all of the fuel in these stages, these stages for a total of 5571 meters per second available. So, let's hop out here and maybe we can just send this thing on out to Minmus. Okay, let's see. Alright, maneuver at the ascending node to do a plane change. That's 6.2 degrees positive, so we need negative normal. Point one degrees looks good to me. So we'll set up an alarm for that. Get in position and then burn it. Getting it in position could be something of a challenge. Which is why I'm really glad there's 10 minutes before the burn to do it in. The ship will get easier to steer, steer when we lose these booster engines, but I want to keep them for as long as they have fuel just simply on the principle of the thing.
now. Come on, you had that thing. I gave it to you on a platter. Now nail it down. Okay, this is going to take a while to get lined up. I'll cut back in just before the burn. All right, after about f another five minutes of fiddling around with it, finally got lined up. Now we burn this. Get our orbital plane lined up with Minmus. on its orbit. I really wish I could stop grabbing that one. I don't want to. Perhaps it's 86 kilometers. A bit high for Minmus, but I'll take it. Set an alarm for that while the ship gets lined up. And we stand by to burn for Minmus. Honestly, I can't remember whether I've been to Minmus in this save yet or not. It's I've had a few things going on, and it's sometimes a little difficult to keep track of which version has been going where. No matter, we'll get out to Minmus, we'll load up on some science, unlock some things to put together a rover, and then start launching rover missions. stage will get us a good part of the way along the ways and then we'll leave it behind. Granted it will be orbital debris but it'll be in a rather high orbit. I doubt it will ever be in the way. suggestion to mod authors, like for example the precise maneuver thing here, if it had a single button on there, remove all maneuver nodes. That would be nice. It would be very useful. Alright, I'm going to burn just a little bit more, bring the moon minimus periapsis down. Okay, it looks like I need to retrograde for that.
84 kilometer min miss orbit. Perfect. All right. Now all we need to do is time warp out to minimum sphere of influence. Now that's interesting. There was a sphere of influence thing here. A little bit of gradual time warp. See if we catch it anyway. We may well. We're ah yes, here it is. Okay, we are now coming into Minmus. A somewhat inclined orbit, but that's perfectly all right for this situation. Set up a capture burn. Eighty six by seventy seven looks good. Set an alarm for it. Get lined up and warp down to execute it. There's our little ball of lime sherbet. And here we go, falling into orbit. We'll get into a nice, really low orbit and spam what science we can. Doing it now while we still can because I understand in 0 0.23 they have put a cap on uh, science transmission so that it requires you to actually get out to a thing, do the science, and then return the science modules to Kerbin. Intact. Okay, burn at T-minus 26 seconds. Or thereabout. careful not to overshoot. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and burn the periapsis down lower while I'm right here. really low say about 15 maybe 10 kilometers eleven point eight looks good All right. Eleven kilometer orbit final. And we'll get 
down low over Minmus and acquire a bunch of science. five meters per second burn it won't take very much Welcome to Minmus Orbit. And now, let the science spamming begin. And I figure to go ahead and do all the science I can. as much as I have electric charge for. When my charge runs out, sit in the sun and recharge in the solar panels because I do have 16 of those single, so single panels on there. This will assure we have enough science for rover construction. same time we'll get all the science we can out of Minmus orbit. And then we'll come back with a rover and do that. And it does seem that having three antennas speeds up the transmission. I do have to be careful here. I'm using quite a bit of electric charge for all these science transmissions. But it's well spent. And in fact, since we're transmitting the science, might just go ahead and leave this ship here, since it is unmanned. and see what's available in the science department. Well, we have to let the ship recharge anyway. The electric charge is down to 175. So, let's adjourn to the science department and see what we find out. All right, here we are. Let's see now. We got 242 science now. Let's go ahead and get the wheels now. Hmm, better landing struts. That might be worth getting, but not necessarily right now. We can't afford it. All right, what do we got here? Thermometer, Kerbal Unconstitutionator, Ladder, some more good useful parts in two sections here. With 90 signs, we can only get one more of these. I'm going to go ahead and get this section. There's more parts in there. And it unlocked another section available for next time or a future time. Really do need to pursue this stuff down here and get more science parts though as well. 
but we have 62 science now and perhaps now a rover can be built.